let's say a person's already convinced that, okay, like, okay, I should follow a workout program then if my goal is to get jacked, uh, get mm. super strong, um, to lose body fat, you know, whatever that may be. Um, how should someone assess which is the right program for them to follow? Yeah, I think the first thing they need to assess is what, is what are the constraints I have on me right now? I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is that they look for what's the best program in terms of what has the highest rating, what gets the most results, what's going to result in the performance outcomes, which has the, the least amount of negative reviews. That's not necessarily a bad thing, um, but if that program happens to be a five day per week training program and you have a, a new child and you work 60 hours a week, it's going to fail. Uh, or it'll come at the cost of you being a good parent or you know having work-life balance. So if you've only got two to three hours to give of dedicated, consistent, hard training, uh, and, you're, and you're doing a program that asks for 50% or 100% more than that, that's a mistake. Um, if you don't have a commercial gym uh, access, or if you don't have the type of equipment or the injury histor history and that, that aligns with the program you're doing, and it's very rigid in its exercise selection, uh, and you don't know how to make those kind of modifications, that's also going to probably you know, fall short. So I think the biggest thing is you need to realistically assess not what's optimal first, but what's logistically feasible and what are the constraints of your life and what are your personal preferences. And then from there, you can eliminate a whole bunch of programs. And then you can kind of take that approach of trying to figure out, um, you know, what, what fits with, uh, within that. That also seems to be based on some good things. Um, the other thing I would say is it, it needs to follow some basic fundamental principles. You know, it needs to have progressive overload built in. Um, it should also be somewhere in the ballpark of what you're adapted to. I think if you're not aware of what's like the, the total volume of a given program or what kind of loads is it asking you to work in and what is the exercises built into it, what's the you know proximity to failure, things like that, how often am I training? If that is... You know, if you're going on a program just because it has good ratings, but it's asking you to triple your volume, um, that might put you in a bad spot. You know, that might that might uh, increase your risk of injury, you know, instead of something that kind of incrementally builds you up to higher volumes. So I think knowing your training history uh, is really important as well. Uh, I think we're I hopeful like we it would be ideal if we were past the point where it was like, what's a good squat program? Small off, you know. And it's like, well, based upon like, I mean, how often do you squat right now? I always squat, you know, once a week, sometimes once every other because my hip hurts. It's like, oh, so you're going to go on a four to five times per week squat program. Well, it's got great ratings. Like, yeah, it's got 10 sets. It must work. Yeah. Like, I mean, it, it will until it breaks you. So it's, 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 it's this kind of idea that um, you have to assess yourself as an individual when you're out there searching for programs. And ideally good programs even have some features built in that can, you know, be, be customized. Like they have a novice version or they have an advanced version or they have a three day version or a four day version or things like that. So, um, yeah, I think those are all really important factors to consider. Yeah. Like a common misconception and it's a common question that we get is, okay, shouldn't I just do is a four day program or a four day program always better than a three day program. And it's a five day program always better, better than a four day program. And, that is obviously uh, taking a very simpl simplistic view on how programming works. Like more is not always better, but maybe can you, Eric, explain in simple terms, sort of how the programming structures might be different for different days and might and might might not be a necessarily a bad thing to have a program that's three days a week versus five or six days a week. Yeah, absolutely. I think the the kind of more is better mentality is asking the wrong question. It starts with the assumption of I need to do what's best rather than what's best for me given my situation. Um, and I think because there are so many leaders in our space, and I include myself as one of them, who come from a bodybuilding or powerlifting background, um, we have a different calculus. Like uh, a lot of the athletes I work with at 3D Muscle Journey, if you said, hey, I need you to do twice the work to get 2% more gains, you know? We're going to go from training three days per week to six so that you can make an immeasurable amount that you won't notice a difference of progress. And uh, and they go, yep, I'm good with that. Because in five years, maybe it'll help me look slightly better on stage. Or, or, or... It's the opposite of the 80-20. Mm -hmm, exactly. It's that, 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 that is kind of the definition of what an athlete is willing to do. It, it is a 
a poorer ROI, but a better absolute outcome. You hope. And that's a thing as well. It's also a bit of a gamble when you make those types of decisions because you don't know for sure. There is not some kind of linear logarithmic or even predictable of any type of relationship between the amount of work you do and what you get. We just know that if you're currently plateaued or if you're currently not making very good progress and you're recovering well, a potential solution that has a higher probability than other solutions might be that you need to do more, but not always. It could be just that you need to do, 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 do something else. So anyway, I think the calculus that most people really want to make in the real world who are not competitive athletes is what is the least amount I can do to make good gains, you know? Uh, and not that they're trying to get away with doing less. It's just a matter of they have a finite amount of time and energy and focus they can give to it. And they make one, they might, they might have very high aspirations as far as how strong they want to get or what physique they want to develop, <clears throat> but it's still a different calculus. And I think that needs to be kind of the baseline starting point. And there are like, you, you can, I think there's these misconceptions of kind of people put black and white frames on things that aren't black and white. I'll give you a, nu a nutrition parallel, for example. Like we have a couple meta analyses now that would suggest that kind of the point where you start to get the most out of, you know, a decent protein intake is right around like 0.7 gram per pound, right? So people kind of have this mindset that if I'm not at least at 0 0.7 grams per pound or 1.6 grams per kilogram uh, or, or higher, then I'm massively missing out on gains. But it's actually highly incremental. So if you're at 0 0.6 or 0.5, that is probably like getting you 80 to 90 to 95% of what you would get on being higher than that. So it becomes this cutoff point when that's not actually the way nutrition or the body operates. You know, like if you should be eating 150, but you're at 130, it's not like, oh, well, what's the point? You know, like I, uh, that day was gone. I probably lost my hamstring overnight. It just fell off. You know, that's not the case. Um, and the same thing is true of, of programming. Uh, if someone comes to me and says, I can only train three days per week, I don't go, well, why are we even doing this? You know, I, I go, sweet, cool. Let, let's figure out what, what we can build into, uh, you know, that approach. Um, similarly, a, another kind of study-based guidance that is accurate, but then overly black and, black and white viewed is, say, the, uh, the 10 plus sets. You know, there's a, a classic meta-analysis from Schoenfeld and colleagues which suggests that you know, when you start looking at all the studies out there that were published from 2017 and prior on volume and the relationship between muscle growth and the amount of sets you do per week, you know, one to four sets, five to nine, and then 10 plus, the you know, highest rate of gains happen at 10 plus. Uh, but you get something like 83, 84% of what you got from 10 plus and five to nine. It's something like 66 or two thirds of that from only doing one to four sets. So that's an example that in some cases you might be doing 250% more volume to get 20, 30% more gains. So it's not like you're not making good gains training three days a week or four days a week when you could be training five. Uh, and in fact, when it really comes down to it, if it creates life stress, uh, if it's you know negatively affecting other aspects of your life, it's a net loss to try to do that higher volume. Because uh, it's going to threaten your adherence, it's going to threaten your enjoyment, and ultimately, long term, it's going to actually result in poorer performance um, because we don't get to, you know, separate these aspects of our lives that are all interconnected. So uh, the the frequency or the the training, uh, you know, the number of days per week you train, really does need to be individualized to your situation. And there are very few people who have reached such a high level uh, that they can't make progress unless they go to a you know, a four or five or six day per week training program. That is something that's, even when you talk about high level athletes, like, you know, for example, I have the pr pleasure and pr privilege of working with like Jessica Bittner and Bryce Lewis. These people are world champions in the IPF. And yes, they train, you know, more frequently than the average person. Like Bryce trains five days a week, typically. Um, he could still progress on three to four days per week. Hmm. It would just be slower. And because he's competing against other people, that is something that we don't want. So for most people, they just want to make progress and they want to make good gains and they want to increase their fitness. Um, and telling them that, hey, you know, you'll you'll get there one month faster after five years is not necessarily, you know, worth them giving up, you know, uh, two afternoons or, or two evenings per, per week when they have a lot of other stuff going on in their life. Um, so I think it, it really comes down, it, it's again, not a dichotomous situation where it's, until you train this much, you make no progress. It's a slightly slower rate. 
uh, or it is, you know, a, a situation where you might not even notice the difference. So I think understanding things in a more incremental rather than a dichotomous manner is, is pretty important when it comes to programming. Yeah, I remember back in the day, somebody at the gym told me, you got to hit at least 72 reps to see training results. And uh, mm -hmm. if you didn't, then you might as well have just gone straight home or don't come at all. And I took that to heart and I did that for like a super long time where I was like counting all the reps and adding it all up uh, to make sure that I hit this magical number of 72. That is probably based upon a, a, a systematic review by Wernbaum and I, the mid 2000s where they looked at the association it is but it's a great example of taking it out of context and making it unnecessarily black and white mm. so Wernbaum and colleagues it was not a meta-analysis but it's a systematic review <clears throat> where they took a bunch of studies I think it was 2008 and they looked at the number of reps performed per week that's how they analyzed the data and then the rate of change in, in muscle growth and the highest rates of change they had it for the quadriceps and the biceps if I recall correctly happened in like the 60 to, to 80 uh, reps per week. So this person who you were talking to was an extreme literalist and they just took, you know, the <laughs> highest number of reps for probably the, the biceps or the quads, I can't remember, um, you know, per week and then just honed in on that. Um, and that's not to say that doing more or less than that didn't result in growth. It just happened to be the highest percentage. So it's taking this, this continuous variable and all of a sudden making it black and white. Um, also, not to mention that that is probably only true in the context of if you're doing sets of the average rep range that were reviewed there. So we don't use reps anymore in 2008. I did in the first edition of my books because that's all we had. But once we started getting these publications that suggested that, you know, at least for hypertrophy, a set of six and a set of 12, even though one's twice as many reps as the other, are just as effective if they're to a similar effort level for, for hypertrophy, if you look at them in a vacuum. Uh, now all of a sudden, you know, analyzing total reps doesn't quite make as much sense. So, um, but if you think about it, like 72, if you're doing an average number of, you know, eight to 12 reps, it's right around that kind of same set recommendation, you know? So it's, it's just funny how, uh, people will look at something and if they actually read it, it's not saying what they say, but our natural human tendency is to oversimplify things, put them in black and white terms. Like you ever watch the news, you know, they'll, they'll bring on an expert, like a true scientific expert, and they'll try to explain things. And then the news person will just nod and they'll be like, so climate change, good or bad, you know? And it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it, it, they, 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 they sometimes, your, our natural inclination is to just try to simplify it down into these uh, binary uh, outcomes when it, it just doesn't need to be that way. And oh, oftentimes we're simplifying it to the point where it's wrong and it's counterproductive. Like in your case, being told you have to do this many reps uh, didn't help you, you know? So, and it probably pushed you further away from something that fit better with, with your individual situation. Yeah, absolutely.